pay attention to history and to theory in the past, because a lot of these ideas were buried under the silt of political opposition, and people don't see them. But if you go back and look to see who said them, you discover that not only the idea that you just had was there, but the full working out of its implications and its limitations was also there. And that's part of what I've tried to do in this book, is to show that the ideas I'm putting forward uh, in, as a coherent framework were there in bits and pieces. As an archaeologist, they were part of the ruins of past arguments. But when you see the overall structure, it's breathtaking, in my opinion, in its coherence, and that then people should take the responsibility to learn. Um, I sometimes say to my students that, you know, it's very exciting to say that you're going to invent it for yourself, and that it's tedious to say, well, other people have done it, but would you really want to send your mother or your father to a surgeon who didn't bother to attend those classes because it's more exciting to say, figure out how to cut for <laughs> yourself? And the answer is obviously not. Well, economics is a kind of social surgery, surgeons, and we need to have the right understanding. And so that brings us back to the old theme. Theory is very important, and you shouldn't think that you can just invent it off the top of your head. I'm therefore not in favor of what is eclectic views where you put together uh, one thing about social life and another thing about neoclassical theory, and you just move back and forth because, in fact, these two conceptions are inconsistent.